So we've seen that the instantaneous velocity can be written as the equation v is equal to ds dt. That is, it's the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. We've also seen that the average velocity can be written as the average velocity is equal to the final displacement minus the initial displacement divided by the final time minus the initial time, which can also be written as the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Now mathematically this makes sense. We'd expect that the instantaneous velocity would be the limit of the average velocity as that time over which it was measured became really, really small. So mathematically we can write that the instantaneous velocity v is equal to the limit as delta t goes to zero of the change in the displacement over the change in time, which is equal to just ds dt. So sometimes you'll see this written as v is equal to dx dt. It's written this way if an object is just moving along the x-axis. In this case, the velocity is just the change in displacement along that x-axis. It's also written this way if we're considering the different dimensions separately. So let's have a try at a problem now. So the question is, a particle moves along the x-axis. Its position is described by the equation x is equal to 5 plus 2t minus t squared. Part a, what is the displacement of the particle in the first 5 seconds? Part b, what distance does the particle travel in the first 5 seconds? Part c, what is the average velocity of the particle in the first 5 seconds? And part d, what is the instantaneous velocity of the particle at t equals 0 and at t equals 5 seconds? Okay, so to do this first part, part a, we'll need to use the equation that the total displacement, delta x, is equal to the final position minus the initial position. So in order to work out what these are, we'll need to substitute into this expression for x and we'll need to use time equals zero for the initial position and time equals five seconds for the final position. So when we do that, we're substituting into five. So this is five plus the final time is five. So two times five, which is 10 minus five squared. This is the final position, and then we'll subtract off the initial position, which is the position it had when t equals 0. So you can see when we put t equals 0 in here, the 2t is 0, and the t squared is also 0. So this one's just going to be 5. And so this 5 will cancel with this 5, and we'll end up with 10 minus 25. So that's going to be equal to minus 15 meters is the displacement of the particle over that period of time. Now part B asks us for the distance that the particles traveled, which is actually a bit more complicated to calculate because we'll need to consider in which direction the particle's going. So the distance is the total path length over which the particle has traveled. So a good way to answer this one is actually to sketch out a graph showing how far this particle has gone. So let's draw a displacement versus time graph here. Now we know that at time equals zero, it is at position five. We calculated that because we had to calculate its initial position. So let's put five meters here. And this here is the position of the particle at five seconds. So at five seconds, it's five plus 10, which is 15 minus 25, it's at minus 10 meters. So we want to extend our axes down here a little bit. We've got minus 10. So at five seconds here, it's at minus 10. So we need to work out how it's got, how, how it moves from here to here. So it turns out that this is a parabola, which we know because it's got a t squared term there. So let's work out where the turning point for this 
parabola is. So one way that we can do that is use our equation for the turning point. So the turning point is given by minus b over 2a. Of course, the other way we could do this is to differentiate it and find out where the derivative is equal to 0. But this way is probably slightly faster in this case, but either method will help. So this is equal to b is the thing in front of the t, so that's equal to minus 2 divided by 2a, and a is the thing in front of the t squared, so minus 1 in this case. So that's 2 times minus 1, so this is minus 2 divided by minus 2, and so this is equal to 1. So the turning point is when t is equal to 1. So let's find out what the position is at t equals 1. So the position when t equals 1 is given by 5 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. So that's 5 plus 2, which is 7, minus 1, which is 6. So the maximum displacement is going to be 6, and it's going to get there at t equals 1. So this is going to be a parabolic path, which goes up like this and then down like that. Sorry, it's a bit of a wobbly parabola, how I've drawn it. It's a little bit hard drawing on this tablet. Okay, so if we want to work out the total distance it travels, well, in the first second, it travels one meter in the positive x direction from five meters to six meters. And then in the following four seconds, it travels from six down to minus 10. So it travels 16 meters in that period. So the total distance is equal to 1 plus 16, which is equal to 17 meters. And remember, distance is a scalar, so we don't need to give a direction for this. And then part C asks us, what is the average velocity of the particle in the first five seconds? So the average velocity is equal to the total change in the displacement divided by the total time. So the change in the displacement was equal to the minus 15 meters, and the average, the, the time, this was over a five second period. So that's five seconds. So this gives us minus three meters per second. Um, and we can put in the x direction. So the negative here is telling us the direction. So if, if we had the x-axis along here, this would be going back in that direction. And then the final part, part D, asks us what is the instantaneous velocity of the particle at t equals 0 and t equals 5 seconds. So to get instantaneous velocity, we need to do dx dt. And so we need to take the derivative of this expression for x up here with respect to t. So when we do that, when we differentiate 5, we get 0. When we differentiate 2t, we get 2. And then when we differentiate minus t squared, we end up with minus 2t. So this tells us that v at 0, we just substitute in t equals 0 into here. So we've got 2 minus 2 times 0. So that is equal to 2 meters per second. And this will be in the positive x direction because it's a positive number. And the velocity at 5 seconds, we substitute 5 in here. So we've got 2 minus 2 times 5. So 2 minus 10, which is minus 8 meters per second. And so that's how we solve this problem.